What's going on guys, Visage here. In today's video, we will be discussing how to convert a win from lane into a win into the game. This topic is very important because many of you are really yes. good at lane phase and you are ahead yeah. in the lane phase, you're better at carry, but you can't not win the game. So something is going on. Whether you are a new player or you are an experienced veteran, this video will provide valuable insights and strategies to help you. So sit back, relax. The problem of converting usually happens to players that are below master tier and especially below diamond. The majority of the players, they lack huge a lot of fundamentals that if they would master they would win a lot more so let's talk about the rules that if you apply correctly my personal expectations is that you will win 60 to 70 percent more games the first rule is play to extend the lead accelerate your gold income you want to look to play more aggressive when you're actually having the lead you want to look to push your lead you want to get plays you want to push more ways you want to get, get something more if we don't want to go in the other extreme where you take huge risks because of course you just give up your lead go so should i force plays no force requires you to do something over how many aggressive which inquires a big risk from you no you should not force we're gonna go and see more examples on this the second is play for objectives and now it's not the Drake it's not the Herald that you want to think about even though they are very important as AD carry the most important thing on AD is farm is getting gold getting farm getting plays this is more important in the beginning of the, the lane if most of the cases in the first 15 minutes at least more important than uh, drakes in majority of the cases of course there are exceptions where you should follow for the drake but as a rule of thumb this is your goal as a decay and the third thing is team fights are important it's the third rule be around your teammates after you got strong so if you're gonna side lane a lot if you're not gonna try to go mid lane if you're not gonna try to rotate if you're not gonna try to hover your teammates you're not gonna convert your lead stay bot lane after your 4-0 don't get the bot tower and you're never gonna win that game you need to rotate and you need to make something happen in the game and two bonus rules right here is the baron national rule like what to do how to actually make baron and when to make baron so you can actually convert the lead into into winning the game and of course course we are gonna explore the example of how to shot call in high elo and how to communicate in high elo so let's get started you say that oh but i heard unless i heard i'm not saying in challenger i'm not saying in grandmaster and i'm not saying in lcs adc or any pro league where people know what they're doing if you play in a solo queue environment and you're below grandmaster so you watch the skill cap challenger tips and tricks guess what most of the rules won't apply for you players and this is why i designed a coaching program that is ready for you so that if you feel like you're in emerald or in gold and you feel stuck uh, the coaching is specialized and personalized for you for your mistakes but if you truly want to improve and you want to get better try out coaching because the coaching can be just for you let's explore the following situation i'm actually following on the river right now there is a play on the river i'm immediately going to go in because i do crash a wave and i immediately move towards the river on the river we actually find yasuo i instantly exhaust him and we go into the lane phase easy peasy right after this we're just going to zone we get a kill i actually slow push the wave because i know that i can crush in time and then after i crush here i actually go for the recall and after i go to recall and i go in the mid game as uh, in the mid in the in the lane we can see that renata is on the top lane right here right so in this case i'm just going to play safe i'm gonna freeze right here chill stay safe wait coach didn't you say you just want to play aggressive after you get a lead you're ahead right well, yeah, but 1v2 in this specific case, since my Renata came, go, went on top, I'm just forcing a freeze right here, and then we are chilling. I'm chilling a little bit, and then right now, my actually, I'm waiting the Renata to come back in the lane. And right now, all what I want to do is I want to slow push here, and I want to start playing aggressive. So exactly when the vein comes in the lane phase, I'm walking up, and I'm trying to punish her. I'm trying to make the wave a big wave, and let's see what's going to happen. They come in the lane phase, I'm already like up in level, because the... Uh, the my, my support just roamed on top lane i'm level six right now and she's level four so i'm playing to win the lane meaning that i'm poking i'm going aggressive i'm trying to make something happen but it's not really risking to die like risking of dying here because you, you can see that my positioning in the laning phase is in kind of in the middle then i force a play right now because i know that the enemy jungle is top side so this is what i try to do i make a, i freeze when my Renata was out but since she came back in the lane and i know i'm ahead because we got some assist on the river we got some xp lead then i try to push it and i poke and push and poke and push and poke now jungle is top lane so i'm gonna zone vein completely and not only that i'm gonna zone vein but i'm also gonna take so many plays and i want to stop her recall as well i did stop her recall right here as well i knew where is the enemy jungle of course if i didn't then i wouldn't actually go for this 
play now i actually take a lot of plates and i know that vein just recall and now she's coming in the lane so i do not want to stay with zero mana here i just want to immediately recall it's better to take only two plates and be able to recall then take three plates and then your recall is gonna get stopped now i recall immediately and then i go to the lane phase and guess what i do right here i repeat it right now wave is coming into me i still play aggressive you can see my my, my play style and the first rule right the first rule is look to play aggressive look to punish what am i gonna do when vein is in the lane i'm like hey brother how are you how was your day i'm walking up and i'm trying to auto attack them use my halo blades try to play aggressive you might say coach you're crazy you're trading in a big minion wave not really i'm just i'm just giving the vein a lesson that hey i'm ahead you're not allowed to stay here i'm 30 years ahead on you i'm I, in nine minutes which is huge you picked Vayne into Varus, I need to punish you, I have a lead and I'm playing for the lead. So right now, um, the only concern I have right now is that my jungle is on the top lane and he, we're playing weak side. So the same thing, right now I'm slow pushing here, I'm not really doing anything crazy. You can see that I'm walking up and I'm zoning, but I'm not really forcing anything. I'm not really going in a position where I'm, I'm like crazy aggressive or the enemy jungle can could gank me. So now I'm slow pushing, slow pushing, slow pushing, and right now I decided to crush three waves in hand side, um, uh, slow pushing a little bit more, so then I crush it on the next wave would be better in this specific situation, and of course, the reason why, the reason is because I can actually crush more waves into the tower, and if I crush the more waves into the tower, I have more chances to poke them more so right now i crushed the wave and what are we gonna do vein good luck have fun we, you're gonna have a hard time i'm not gonna spend the poke on the var on the bard i'm just gonna spend the poke on the vein i force her cleanse we force the fire. i mean i'm not want to say we force it because we're not really forcing anything we're just playing aggressive forcing requires you to take also a risk i'm not taking risk i know where is the jungle right now i know what they can do the jungle can be slowly around bot lane I have, a, I have 10 farm per minute right now, Vayne has 60 farm, this guy is a master tier player last season, so he's not bronze, he's not, so he's a pretty reasonable player, uh, so we're not really playing against a bad player, now I'm just pushing the lead and pushing the lead, the reason why I stay here is because again, I see the enemy jungle on the map, and I see Vayne is staying, so there is no reason to recall, some of you could say, yeah, but you have the Yomus in base, it is true, but if I know where is a jungle, and if the enemy AD carry is lower than me in the lane, then why would I recall? Then I push the wave right here, and then after I push the wave, I recall, and of course I go towards mid lane to convert my lead, to convert my lead into a win. This is how you win. Now Vayne is gonna be stacked on the bot lane, and I'm gonna go on mid lane immediately. So this is easy peasy, they'll try to force on me, but in the end, it's so hard for them to play, because what's gonna end up happening in the next minutes is Yasuo is gonna get zoned, the Vayne is not gonna be able to do anything on the bot lane, Yasuo is gonna die, we're gonna get mid tower, and it's easy easy they can't really do much right here and this is what you should do as well you should play to accelerate the game you should play aggressive again as you saw right here don't take stupid risk you don't know where is the jungle play it slower you don't overwhelmingly like don't don't grief it don't go so aggressive don't try to play over aggressively don't risk dying but if you know where is the jungle and you see that you can play more aggressive do it do it without forcing without diving and doing something crazy and after you've done that then of course as you can see, you can see on the screen right now convert and now i'm going to go top i went mid lane got the tower bot lane i went mid lane i'm going mid lane i'm getting herald we're pinging herald i'm pushing mid lane a lot of players are winning the lane they're going back to the bot lane and they're like oh i can't win i can't win i can't win you know i have a lead i win the game and i win the lane and i can't do anything well this is why you need to be accessible to the map while still getting the farm because now you might say wait but should i give up the farm no as you can see on the re this replay i have nine farm per minute 9.5 farm per minute and it's true that i'm still in the cannon right here um but i'm still farming i'm still farming on mid lane and of course if your mid lane doesn't want you to group or let's say you're like uh, oh but what if my mid laner doesn't let me you know in that case you can ping him once and if he really doesn't want to do it then you go back to bot lane and after you push you go back to mid lane you still try to fluctuate and stay around mid lane after you, sh you fix your wave but this is really the concept you can see right here i'm 5-0 and then of course on 27 minutes uh this is like a very very easy game we won it and realistically speaking the leblanc wasn't really so ahead in this game viego was doing okay it's just we snowballed from the bot lane uh and this is it wasn't really easy but it was like the concept is like we play the aggressive but not too aggressive we push for plates very important to push for plates we didn't risk anything and then we actually rotated correctly these three rules very very important for you of course you might say hey i got a lead so i want to get waves i want to get plates right well 
it's not always the case really so let's actually examine what happened in the very beginning of the, the early game of this master tier game so we're actually killing bard right now and i have 900 gold so you guys can see right here i have 900 gold uh Bane is relatively like he's like she's half hp i'm not actually crushing here immediately because i know that there is another wave that is coming and right now when this wave is coming i'm just looking to uh try to push just queue on the minions and push aggressively i get a like a little bit of a lead but i'm not actually going for plates in this case because it's very greedy and i just have to recall so there are a lot of cases where yes you gotta kill uh, yes you want to push more wave you want to push more plates but sometimes you can't like in this situation for example i couldn't go for plates right because the plate was full hp and vein um i mean vein would stop my recall if i try to get for a plate and in like in reality like in the reality is that I wouldn't be able to get the plates anyways right because it's full hp so if you're too low hp to go for a one to push one more wave or you you see that you can't retake the plate after you get a kill that's fine just go recall it's okay as long as you don't greet it as long as you don't risk it um then it's it's okay it's again if it implies a big risk by you pushing one more wave or taking that one more plate it's better to just recall so don't do like stupid risks but still play aggressive the second rule as i said is play for objectives and i said that be careful because not always objective doesn't always mean drake and herald so in this specific situation we can examine one uh, one game with ezreal again same rank diamond one master tier diamond two kind of this range so what i do right here is that i play for the bot tower because of course before i group mid lane in the majority of the cases i just have to get the bot tower there are some cases where let's say they have zed they have nocturne and you can't retake really the bot tower in which case you can group mid lane a little bit earlier another case would be if you're super ahead you can also group earlier uh, than you know you willing to get the bot tower first there are a lot of exceptions but as a rule of thumb if you get the bot tower first uh, it should be fine so right now i don't exactly have a lead but i do have a lead in terms of the tower right here so i take the tower and i move mid lane and after i move mid lane I just try to hover my jungle or my super depending on which place i have on the map and of course majority of the players would be like oh yeah so right now i'm gonna get prior mid lane i'm gonna push wave mid lane i'm gonna wait my wave to come into me right not really you're pushing the wave for a reason you want to do something with it so right now i'm trying to push it trying to play for the item this is my purpose and then i'm also paying attention to bot lane and to top lane if i see an incoming play that i can redo i'm immediately gonna go there so this is why i got top lane here i see malphite overextending i'm pinging i'm playing around my jungle i'm playing around my super and with this push wave i'm not just okay let me just wait the wave on mid lane and just chill it is true that sometimes you just have to do that if you're behind or they will push it first and you have to stay into under the, your tower and take it that's fine but majority of the cases you want to play proactive you want to do something with the push so here let's recap i got the tower on bot lane i got the lead on the tower there so i always try to uh, use that time use that tempo right to do, make something happen on the map so i just recalled i went mid lane and with the prior that i've got right here i went towards top lane and this is what happened you could argue that oh the, this is also because your teammates you know uh, they, they were good and they were there what if your teammates are not there if my teammates are not there and i know i can't kill malphite i don't even move but the purpose is really you have to look to move you have to be ready and if they are there you should always be able to be okay if not then it's fine so play for objectives that means play for plates play for rotations after you get the tower try to play for something don't just try to you know uh, chill in the, in the in the game and just just don't take objectives or you get some kills and you don't get anything or you get the bot tower and you you come you come back in the bot lane so imagine what kind of big mistake i would do if let's say i get the bot tower on, on right now and right now i'm going bot lane or i'm going to uh, farm the raptor so I'm, I'm going to because a lot of people are like oh yeah i'm gonna back go back to bot lane or yeah no bot lane is stupid because the wave is pushed but i'm gonna go and get the farm no i mean yes you want to get the farm but it has to be mid lane because you have to accelerate so after pushing the mid lane you have a lot of options move with belve move towards top lane make a play i mean right now move towards top lane just a malphite it's very stupid to go top but since we have fizz ulti as we can see right here on the screen it's very good to just pat towards bot lane and hover play for objective if the first rule was actually around get plates you know um, play more aggressively the second rule is around uh, objectives towers you know fights very 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 important and the third rule we're going to talk about more about team fights let's examine the third rule that we have right here so we talked about being the team fight this is the third rule is stay around your teammates being the team fight hover your teammates very 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 important i see a lot of players that they just play the game and a lot of cases in this in this kind of situations is that they are just over split pushing so right now let's examine this specific situation where 
I'm playing bot lane. That there is the bot tower right here. Um, there is not really much I can really do other than just playing for the bot tower. So let's speed it up a little bit. So right now I'm just waiting to see if I can get a tower. As I get the tower, I can just go for the Drake because I see jungle is around me. I have a huge amount of gold, so I could always also recall in that situation. That's no problem. But I actually decided to go for my for the Drake since Maokai and Zin were already there. I'm pushing the bot lane. I'm pushing one more right now, and then immediately after I push this wave, I actually hover mid lane. Of course, you could argue that i should also recall first but since i have two items right now essence river with the uh, many moon i know i can be in this fight i see they're chasing as is always in a position so yes it is true that you might say yeah coach but wait why in every situation do i just move like this if i have a lot of gold well if you have a lot of gold and you only have tier i wouldn't really have followed here because if you're not if i'm not strong if i know that i'm not strong enough to make a significant impact i'm not following this if i'm lucian and i only have tire one boots i'm not following this with two to uh, 2k gold if i'm a champion with uh, like a very low items i'm just prioritizing the recall and the attitude of be selfish be selfish is good in this specific situation though i'm strong enough to make a, an impact in the fight and even if i have 2k gold i can make an exception and i can fight with them especially because one the fight is close to me so the distance rule and two as i'm looking at the fight i know this fight is gonna last for a minimum 10 seconds because maoka has aftershock maoka is tanky i can see the positioning of the people so I'm moving right there. So I'm not just staying bot lane, chilling on bot lane. No, I'm just moving. I got a kill right here. I'm pinging on my way, on my way, on my way. Guys, let's do something. And I am on mid lane. Right now I get the tower. And right here, I just try to get the second tower. And we try to extend the lead. Right now, after I push this wave, I really, really, really have to recall. So I'm not going to overextend anymore. And guess what? After I do this, I just go towards mid lane. I go towards mid lane right now and I try to stay there. So the rule that you actually have to get from this situation is that, yes, you can stay on the side lane. Yes, you need to get your farm. You need to catch your side lane. But always be ready to be back in the mid lane. Because in the, the reality is that after you get a lead you need to do something with it you need to move away of bot lane you need to rotate you need to be in the team fight so don't just get over helm of like oh i'm an ad carry i need farm i'm gonna farm until six items majority of the cases after an item and a half you can already group you can already do something you can already consider to hover look at me right now i'm just hovering on my teammates i'm just i could have been mid lane right now but i know that that wave doesn't really push anything and now i go get the wave and guess what after i get the wave i'm looking at my teammates and boop shakalaka i'm moving towards them again so i'm trying to have a playstyle where i'm getting as much farm in mid game as possible but the most important thing is staying around my teammates and hovering fights that are close to me of course if the fights are like really really far from me i'm not even going like considering moving there but if the fights are like close to me i always consider to be there with them another very important thing that you have to take into consideration is to not spend too much time on side lane after the baron usher is actually spawned so we can see right here this was a coaching session that a player that actually booked wanted to get from gold to emerald she's actually going to bot lane because there is a big wave that is coming into her right here but the better nasher is up right here right so this means if the better nasher is up right here is that there is a high chance that the enemy team will just go for that and that means if you're not there it's gonna be very bad so what i told this client is that hey okay you go for the bot lane because this wave is actually pressuring you go there take it fast because it was actually going into your tower it was relatively big take it fast and immediately urgently go towards mid lane if you push one more wave on, on the bot lane what's going to end up happening is that your Lux, Swain and everyone that is going to be mid lane with Master Butter E they're going to go towards Nashor they're going to force a fight because the enemy team has Akali, Yasuo, Malphite and you're going to be bot lane pushing while they win a fight enemy win wins a fight and they also get the Nashor be very careful when you're actually side laning and the objective of the Baron Usher is on the map. Try to spend as little amount of time as possible right there because if you're not grouped, if you're not with your teammates, if you're not there, you can't carry the fights even if you have a lead. Be very careful how much time you spend on the side lane. And of course, if you'd like to say, oh, but what if I get a little bit, what if I get my Green Suits or my Kraken Slayer or my Infinity Edge if I push one more wave? Would that be worth? In that case, yes, it's arguable and it could be worth if it's for a huge power spike, pushing that one more wave as long as you're not really risking dying, it's fine. But if you're just pushing, just to push it's not good or if you're just pushing for a dagger or for a curbo or for an item that is fine but not really going to make a huge impact then it's bad and another thing that you need to be careful is the following after you lose the tower on the bot lane and you want to like really play slow whether you're behind or you're a little bit ahead you have to be very careful that the enemy indicator will try to snowball we try to go back to mid lane right so she jinx in this case she's going to try to push She's trying to go to try to snowball. So the worst thing that Kogmo can do here is the Jinx is going to go mid lane and 
trying to force a fight, they have Zerat, Anive is gonna, well, she has enough wave clear, it's just your teammates are gonna most likely fight, because we know that, okay, in Challenger, they shouldn't be fighting, you know, I'm staying on the boat lane, you know, I can also freeze, but this is actually be the worst thing that you can actually do in games like this, simply because your teammates if you're playing an emerald gold platinum even low diamond even diamond 2 diamond 3 your teammates won't really uh, understand the concept of hey i'm like right now i'm off tempo i'm like not able to really do anything on the map meaning that they should just wave clear on mid lane mastery should farm his jungle and i'm fine so the worst thing that i can do right now because i know that i know that my team is gonna fight it's just gonna be like normal in the mid game for his solo queue fights of course in lec lcs it's not normal or clash because you can communicate with them but in this case if you freeze here and jinx go mid lane kills all, all of your teammates they get herald they get mid tower it's not good so the worst thing that you can do right here as a kogmo as an ad carry is freezing this wave or playing it slow you gotta push it as fast as humanly possible try to play for the bot tower because if you push it as fast as possible and you crush the wave jinx will think about going back to bot lane to catch that wave so you can either push the wave and then go back to mid lane if you think that it's greedy for you to actually push the tower let's say they have nocturne z or whatever but if it's not greedy or if you see the z or the nocturne or the cane on the map then you can just go and push for the tower so right here this player so this was like i actually coached this guy uh and she, uh, she he was uh, gold before the coaching and like two days after he got the coaching he immediately went to plat with the coaching session uh, because i teach him the fundamentals of lane and the fundamentals of uh, being around the teammates when she sh when he should be around the teammates it's that simple in the following example we're going to talk about why is the better nasher going to actually help you to convert leads into early game into lead into the later stages because most of the people they don't do nasher and especially in low elo they don't really recognize the situation when they can actually do baron if you actually get baron you can push multiple lanes you have the minions advantage uh they are stronger they're tankier you also get ap ad is just an overall really good buff let alone that you're also getting gold uh and experience so let's see what these guys are actually doing right here so we can see that they're actually trying to siege mid lane and after they siege mid lane, Afari does an amazing play and kills Ezra. So at this point in time, they should immediately turn their attention to the Baron Nasher. Usually the rule says if you killed minimum two people inside of a team fight uh, and you have like significant number advantage and it's past 20 minutes you can always think about doing the baron nasher i mean of course right now um best case scenario we kill the enemy jungle and if we kill the enemy jungle we can start our nasher right away uh since we just killed the ezreal in this specific case we have to have minimum two people uh, dead but even in this case we can see this is like a gold silver game everyone should turn their attention to the baron not just uh you know do it because we can't redo really it right here since just Ezreal died and not Lee Sin and so again if it's the jungle even one person that can actually make you go for the Nashor if it's not the jungle you need to kill minimum two people in order for you to actually go for the better Nashor that's usually uh, how it actually works they can't really do natural right here but they can look to get some vision and they should ping uh, the vision ping ding 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 and then they should actually try to get that they are not really even looking to get it. Melio is doing the wrong thing he's trying to like play with yorick yorick should anyways be on bot lane not really on top lane because baron is up everyone is just wandering around the, they don't know how to convert uh, this game into a win this nafari has nine kills but he's gonna lose this game because all what he's doing is like he's playing for kills and he's not really taking anything he's not really taking any objective in it so the most important thing is if you kill two people you want to look to go for the nasher minimum two people so if you have a significant number advantage you can always turn attention to the baron nasher and usually when you ping the baron nasher you have to spam ping like multiple times and if you press tab and you ping the uh, the normal ping with alive 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 that one you should ping with a ping that people will hear it if you just ping that one no one is going to really care so you have to ping assistance or all in all in on the baron nasher so they can hear it and i, I would also check if my teammates are inside of the fight i see a lot of players like they are uh, you know let's say right now let's say right now right here we are having this this thing going on with the, with the uh listen and now smaller is pinging baron 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 like no one is gonna hear it so let the fight uh, let the fight end and after the fight is gonna end don't ping right now the baron nasher because everyone is in the fight so for example right here if i'm aurelian soul i'm first killing the amumu and right now 
when they are thinking should we go mid lane should we go national this is when you're pinging because your teammates especially if you play below master tier they won't really have a game knowledge they don't really have so much game sense so they will not really instantly turn away their attention to baron like in challenger or grandmaster or maybe high masters as well so what you have to do you have to ping them exactly after the fight ended and of course you have to consider three important things when actually going for the national one is who is going to tank it like when you have a minimum one target target that is going to tank it two is who is going to damage per second it so of course when it comes to who's gonna tank it you need a tank malphite or like just a bruiser darius with significant amount of hp second of all who is gonna damage per second it you need some champions like yasuo yone cassiopeia with kraken slayer kindred stuff that are ad that do a lot of damage um if you don't have this then you consider yourself uh, having a very slow Baron Nashor, like for example in this case with Ezreal, not so good MF, useless in the Baron Nashor, especially because she has Comet, but we do have the Yasuo, which is actually pretty fast, makes it pretty fast, especially with three items. So think about who's going to tank it, who's going to do damage, and most importantly, maybe is are they enemy is the enemy going to be able to contest with aoe damage so for example here if the the this team is actually going to start the Nashor with Nafari, Smolder, Milio, they should be like, yes, we are gonna start it, but guess what? MF can just ulti from here to here the whole pit. Guess what? Aurelian Soul can ulti the whole pit. Guess what? Ezra is gonna ulti the whole pit. Guess what? Listen is gonna have a tie spot ultimate kick with the Yasuo ulti. Think about these things. Zerat, Aurelian Soul, Ezra ulti, blah, blah, blah. Stuff, AOE damage that can actually come to you and immediately just, uh, just break the game. So we have to really pay uh, attention to all of these three aspects when actually going for the better nature. Another really important thing is when you have your lead, if you see that your teammates are keep dying and keep dying and keep dying, don't get discouraged. Try to keep focusing on your own gameplay, see what you can do the best and try to actually just make the best out of it. So in this situation, as we can see that right now, Talon is actually dead, Rel is actually dead, but I'm not really, I'm not tilted. I'm like, okay, they died. What am I going to do right now? Thinking, always thinking, based on the present like based on what happened i'm looking for a solution i'm not really looking for uh you know who who did that so let's blame someone let's i'm actually going top lane i'm like okay let's wave clear a little bit more our alien soul is gonna scale it's fine they died on the side lane i'm thinking about the solution instead of being like okay they are throwing this game is unwinnable so i'm always always present and i'm trying to not tilt in this situation i'm trying to just do my best in this game because the reason why i play this game is because i want to improve and I want to get better. So with my teammates, they matter. They matter whether I can win or not. But I just want to make the best out of it. And as you can see right now, give Drake play for top lane. I'm actually trying to write them, like write down the things that they should do because Rel is trying to contest the Drake. This is Diamond Two, Diamond Three. So people, some people, you know, especially if they are tilted, they can be considered clueless. They can't, they don't have macro. Even in this Elo, even Master Plus, sometimes depending on the players so typing in some of the situation can be good again as long as you know what you're doing and as long as you're doing good in the game if you're 0 5 in the game and you're starting to type it might actually be like it's a bit annoying for your teammates to see that the bane 0 5 is actually typing guys do this do that so don't don't don't, don't try to type if you if you're like not like really confident on what, what you should do or what you should be doing and more importantly don't try to type if you're behind in the following situations we're gonna see three most the most um useless and bad mistakes that you can do when it comes to snowballing your lead the first mistake is you throw your lead you get your lead but then you make a decision that is bad or you die and you make something like you take a risk and you just end up dying and then you just throw your lead so for example this twisted fate um zero zero one he has a lead he actually pushes the wave so right now he does have a good lead he was actually already ahead soraka had to assist she is 400 gold ahead on the mf so what he's doing he's try gonna try to push the wave which can be like okay you know i should push the wave i should i should extend my lead first of all uh, you should not push by yourself you should always ping your soraka to help you push because the reason why he wasn't be able to like crush in time is because um soraka didn't help so what he should have done is that if he need, if he knows for sure he can crash without Soraka, he can definitely consider letting her uh, recall. But in majority of the cases, just getting a bit of help so you can actually make sure you crash the wave is very important. So what he did here, he actually made the freeze for the MF. So he tried to push his lead, he tried to push the wave, but it wasn't really 
the good solution what he should have been doing right here is that he should have pinged soraka multiple times on the wave two times usually i like to ping on the wave like hey bro let's try to push this wave and then he should just play from there uh you, he can definitely crush the wave another situation you can be like oh but my soraka is uh, you know useless and uh, you, you, she, she's not doing anything in the lane she doesn't listen supports are stupid it, if the supports are stupid uh well if the supports don't really listen to you, what Twisted Fate should do right here, if he sees that he's pinging and Soraka is, is actually just pressing B, he should just recall. Yeah, I mean it. Recall just right now. This is a freeze. He has enough minions to be a freeze because he has... He can actually set it up right here very well. Uh, very, very well. Just because he has five minions, so he just needs to trim it a little bit. He needs to kill one minion because the freeze is with four minions extra on the enemy wave. We have zero minions right here on this current wave, so four minions should do it. So, right now, if Twisted Fate is smart, he's paying attention to his gold. He has 947 gold. Um, he can he can uh, buy a decent item with that this, this amount, but he's most likely willing to actually get more. So, based on his gold, the correct challenger decision making would be to push two waves and to crush even though that would actually give time to the mf to get all of the wave and of course a challenger player if he has let's say noon quiver 1300 gold he would consider to not push this wave and, and recall right away so all of these decisions can be um you know done if you're paying attention to the gold if you like see the dead timer of the or the mf and you're trying to think about your wave clear as twisted fate and soraka and you also have to think about what is the chances that you die here of a gank very low since it's more Kaiser and you have a reasonable amount of hp right here so the decision in low willow should be made again based on the gold but in the situations when soraka doesn't really help you uh, you can just recall right away so he just he just threw his lead he got a good lead and he just threw the lead and if we actually go into the so this guy is zero to zero this is like a gold game if we go in the in the end of the game the mf actually won the game significantly so this twisted fate could have won immediately and this is the problem that is very common for for people like not being able to snowball uh, so if you have this problem you should definitely consider getting some coaching because i can help you to fix that immediately and you can improve so fast after that the second problem that people have is that they get a lead but they don't actually get plays they don't push waves they don't try to extend it so let's take a look at this so right now mf and zera they're actually pushing very aggressively this guy is under the tower extremely extremely low hp so what they're gonna end up doing is that they're gonna try to play super 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 aggressive try to ulti they actually get a kill here and twisted fate is one hp we know that he's gonna recall so what mf should do is that she should extend the lead as much as possible there is no threat here of the enemy jungle it's a volley bit and they are full hp um well at least mf is full hp so so she's not really in any danger twisted fate just recall right now so we know it so what should she do right now obviously based on uh, her mana she should recall based on her hp she could consider going for a plate the plate is full hp oh sorry the plate is half hp and she has a reasonable amount of items right now dirk actually pretty good to get the plate the decision should be made on first of all um can she get the plate safely and the answer is absolutely yes the enemy jungle can't kill her she knows that uh Twisted Fate just recall and she knows that the Soraka is around the, the lane but it, uh, Soraka is not really a threat. Second of all, she should ask herself, am I able to actually recall after I take the plate or am I able to die after I take the plate? Can they come from behind or... And in this case, the answer is no. She has enough vision on the river and Soraka, even for coming from behind, she's not really in any danger at the moment. Um, again, she also has to think about the Twisted Fate positioning. So if Twisted Fate is, let's say, here, and she knows that by trying to push this wave, she takes the plate, but then she's going to need to recall here or here, and then Twisted Fate might be able to actually stop her recall. The decision of recalling right away is good. But in this position, Twisted Fate just recalled. We can see his position right now. Soraka is not really a threat. We have enough vision. And, of course, the plate is also pretty low based on our, go our items. This is what you need to think about. Uh, when you're getting the plate or not you need to think about can i get it safely can anyone kill me or stop my recall second of all you also have to pay attention to where is uh, approximately where is the enemy ad carry and where this enemy support if the enemy support is a support that you know can kill you and obviously uh, you need to think about all of these things uh, plus you need to see actually your items how many items you have and the size of the plate because if the plate is one, like very very healthy and you only have let's say a dagger or you have only have a donor's blade then you can just consider recalling right away so it also depends on the minute of the game this guy just recalled and we can see that he won the game again 
uh, but he wasn't really snowballing properly he just got stomped in the laney phase and because twisted fate just played twisted fate because he saw it in in uh, what uh, in whatever rank in like high low she still like lost the lane against the twisted fate soraka here a zera mf which is actually quite embarrassing because mf is like really powerful with Zerat in the lane twisted fate is not bad it's just it's not compared to mf is like not 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 good at all the next mistake is not grouping fast enough or spending too much time on the sideline. So let's see what this MF is actually doing after she gets a lead. So she's actually getting a lead and we know that we want to snowball, we want to go to mid lane, we want to make something happen. But obviously you can also consider staying on the bot lane and taking waves if, if you know that you're forced to do that and it's an urgency. So let's actually explore this specific situation and see what's happening. So she actually almost barely got the tower right now. She's just going to recall, go back to the mid lane. Twisted Fate got the tower. So right now what Twisted Fate should do, he has 600 gold so he can go mid lane right away or he can just simply uh, get a bit of vision on the, the Drake. That's absolutely all right. So this is what he should be doing. The phase check here is absolutely stupid. He doesn't really know his goal. He should just put some ward and he should do it from here. Just put the ward, not phase check the brush. And then he should just get some vision here. This brush is extremely important uh, to actually get vision. And he was trying to really fight when he shouldn't redo really it. So now, no, now MF is actually going to get the tower. And after MF is getting the tower, she has two options. Just go mid right away or just recall and go mid right away of course unless they need the help for the drake but this is not the case because we have this word right here uh enemy jungle was actually seen on top lane and the drake is 2.5k hp right now so by the time that mf is going to be here the drake is going to be like 1k so it's not worth to actually help in this specific situation so what mf should do right now based on her gold 1k gold she should recall and then she should go to mid lane of course she doesn't do it she just AFKing bot lane, getting vision on bot lane. What the fuck are you gonna do? Get the bot tower. You're never gonna get this tower ever. You have to go mid lane. You have to play for the Herald. You had to go towards mid lane. Now you don't have really as much time because Twisted Fate is gonna push this wave. So right here, if Twisted Fate is good, Twisted Fate is doing the same mistake. Like right now he got the tower, he should be mid lane, but obviously for him getting the bot wave, bot wave is very important because he's actually pressing her in his tower, he's like close to his tower, so he should push this wave and move towards mid lane or just push this wave and then push another wave and then move towards mid lane, depending on if he has ultimate. He does not have his ultimate, so getting into this fight is very unrealistic, so if he's pushing this wave and he's getting there, he's never gonna get there in time, so he should push one more. So he should push this wave, push one more, then go mid lane. He actually stays for the Krugs. Absolutely useless. You stay here for 100 gold when you can pressure this tower by pushing this wave. And then you can immediately move towards mid lane. If you get more farm and be and stay in the fight, it's 10 times better than let me get some more farm. Let me get some Krugs. Let me get 100 gold. Let me, let me just farm, you know, let me farm camps. Camps are good as an indicator, but the majority of the case, if, if, there is, if there is something else that you can do on the map that involves your teammates or there is some farm, some experience you always prefer to get farm uh uh, rather than the camps you always prefer to be in the fight if you have enough items he has an item and a health so he is reasonably strong reasonably strong um so in this specific situation of course challenger player but or might also tell me yeah but you know if there is no fight here uh getting the camps and if there is not nothing really on the map getting a camp is not bad right well it is true and then challenger players will also tell me yeah bro but anyways this guy is a really bad player because when you're taking a camp you're always trying to pressure and get the way first and then get the camp so you can pressure the lane first and get the camp after i mean there are a lot of mistakes this is like a gold player so we have a blissful amount of mistakes like probably every five seconds we look at his game play he does something wrong uh but we're not really talking about that same thing with mf here she pushed she should immediately turn to the mid lane it's not like she can get into this fight but if she can go mid push the wave and then either pressure this tower if she can but if she can't no problem she can always go back to bot lane to actually uh save this tower well not save this tower but save the wave because twisted fate is going to be uh pressuring there but what she does she recalls and she goes mid which is actually pretty good at least she's going mid and now, now she's actually going back to bot lane which theoretically it could be good because Twisted Fate is pushing but practically she doesn't have a tower so she's not forced to go now bot lane. I understand if Twisted Fate was here and he was pushing she should go bot which is absolutely fine but in this specific situation she should stay mid, push the mid lane and she, she, she should send Lux on the bot lane and then of course if Lux doesn't want to go bot lane then you go bot lane. So this is what she should have done. Right now she's actually forcing a play, she gets a kill and same mistake. She pushes this, she recalls which is really good because she's low HP and then after she recalls she should go mid because she has two 
items or well almost two items right here right um so should never be on bot lane only go on bot lane if the wave is like pressuring you in any way and you're forced to but in this case easily be mid lane twist fate is mid lane he's trying to make something happen and of course mf uh, in the end she actually went towards mid lane but she spent too much time on bot lane one she wasn't trying to group on mid lane after she got the tower two she wasn't really trying to hover place when she was on bot lane and the wave was right here she should try to go towards mid lane and then of course if you're right here and you have to go back bot lane because the twisted fate is right here and he's pushing the wave that's fine but you willing to actually hover the play and looking to see what's going on there because maybe you have ultimate maybe they're gonna end you ulti and you can get a kill uh before you return to bot lane so this is the biggest mistake here this is a very big mistake that uh people people do actually here Five dollars. If you have problems improving and getting better in the game faster, but you cannot afford booking coaching on my Patreon, you can access more than 627 VOD reviews, premium videos about how to wave management, mid game macro, and tire lists that will show you the best champions to climb and to improve for your ELO. And these are not on YouTube, this is only on Patreon, they're exclusive. Moreover, you can participate in the free coaching waiting list to get a premium VOD review. I'm giving away two free VOD reviews every single week. All what you need to do is simple, two-step process subscribe to my patreon and share your opgg and voila you are on the waiting list you're gonna get a personalized vote review for any game in your match history for just five dollars you get not only the free pod review but a whole bunch of exclusive benefits that will supercharge your gaming experience it's a small investment for a big return and it's just five dollars it's no brain right but here is the deal you've got to act quickly the waiting list is already filling up fast 55 people already subscribed to the patreon and there are six people that they already are on board they are on the waiting list and more are joining every moment now do you want to secure your spot for a free vote go ahead on my patreon and reserve it right now